Okay, guys, welcome to the last section in chapter 6. It's been quite a journey. We're going to look at conservation laws and relativity. And, uh, okay, so just starting off here, it says we want to look at, uh, in 6.3 in 6 we looked at the principle of rel relativity that states that the laws of the universe are the same in any inertial reference frame. What laws are we talking about? Momentum and energy laws. Okay, so notice here we want to, in this section, we want to look at these laws in two reference frames, inertial reference frames. And we want to see how they differ in different inertial reference frames. So we already said here that um, the laws of the universe the momentum and energy laws are the same in any inertial reference frame. Okay, um, so we are now going to look at these laws in two inertial reference frames and see how they are the same and where they differ actually. Okay, so what do we mean by the same here? Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to start <coughs> with velocity and we're going to look at velocity and what I've got here if I can find it is a little table reference frame A and reference frame B and we're going to look at a few different things we're going to look at velocities in the two reference frames <coughs> sorry we're going to look at the momentum momenta in two refer different reference frames and uh, the, the change in momenta we're going to look at, anyways, I'm not going to bore you by reading all of this. We're going to look at lots of things in two different reference frames. The first thing which really forms the basis, I would say, <coughs> of these, um, of comparing these reference frames is velocity. Okay? So, if we have the velocity of an object A, and we are looking at that same velocity, the, the velocity of that object in another reference frame. Are they the same or are they a different velocity? Well, we know that they are different. Okay? So, we know that because you're looking at, a, a <coughs> at an object's velocity in a different reference frame, the two velocities are different. Okay? So, these are different. <coughs> okay. Now you can go and look at the previous chapters. Um, so, for example, if you've got an object moving at a certain velocity, say you've got two objects. One is one is moving. So there's one and there's two, and that one's moving left. That one's moving right, and then they collide and they start to move away from each other. Right, the velocity time diagram is going to look something like this. They're going to um, move toward each other, collide, and say now this one starts to move left and that one starts to move right after collision. So then it'll do something like this, <coughs> something like that, right? Okay, so if you're looking at, say this is in the A reference frame, and you want to look at it in the B reference frame, depending on what kind of reference frame it is, you agree with me that just these values, w this, this curve would just shift up or down depending on the direction of the, uh, uh, of the reference frame, the velocity of the reference frame. So, it could move down, for example. It could move all the way down, and then something like that. So, th this entire curve just moves down. <coughs> or it could move all the way up, right, in this new reference frame. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. The point is that the velocity is equal to this. The velocity of the object in the A reference frame is equal to this plus B0. So th there is a shift. This is the amount <coughs> that the one shifts relative to the other. Okay. So we are happy now that these two velocities in two different reference frames are different. What about the delta Vs? What about if I measure this change in velocity in the A reference frame, and then I measure the same cha I measure the change in the B reference frame, right? Well, 
we need to see that these, in different reference frames, the change in velocity is the same. Okay? So we just need to uh, go back and have a look at that. These delta v's of these, of these objects are the same. Now, that forms a basis for, for the next thing, which is the momentum. So the momentum, what about momentum of, object, of the object in the A reference frame versus the, that same, the momentum of that same object but in a different reference frame? Is it, is it going to be the same or different? It will be different, right? Why do we say that? Because P equals MV. So P of the object in the A reference frame is equal to the mass of that object times V of AO and P in the of the object in the B reference frame is the mass times the velocity in the B reference frame. So if, if these velocities are different, then the momenta are different. So we've got a different difference there. What about the delta P? Remember, these are single objects, right? Single object, single object. What about the delta P's? Well, they will be the same in, two re in the two inertial reference frames. Why do we say that? Because the delta V's are the same. Because P is equal to M V, so delta P, the change in momentum, is equal to m delta v, the change in velocity. So if the change in velocity is the same in the two reference frames, your change in momentum will be the same in your two reference frames. This is for a single object. And so then it just simply follows for a s the system momentum. That's if you calculate the momentum, the p of this object, and you've got the p of 2, and you've got the p of, of 2, so P1 plus P2, that's your system momentum. M1 V1 plus M2 V2, that's your system momentum. In the A reference frame, um, that's how you calculate it, in the one reference frame. And in the other reference frame, of course, it will be different, right? Why do we say different? Because the velocities are different. Now, what about the delta P's, the change in momentum? for the system. So it says changes in the momentum of a system are the same in any two reference frames moving at a constant velocity. So again, if the delta V's for each object are the same in two reference frames, then the delta P for the system is also the same in the two reference frames. <coughs> okay. So I hope, hope you're getting some kind of picture here. Now, we're moving on to kinetic energy for a single object in two different reference frames. Of course, we know that if you've got, for a single object now, single object, if you've got half mv of the object in, in A squared, and then you're measuring the kinetic energy in the B reference frame, because these velocities are different, those kinetic energies will be different, right? Now, what about delta K? The, del the change in kinetic energy. Remember, these two objects are colliding and changing velocities. So they're, they're going to have some kind of change in kinetic energy. So what about their change in kinetic energy in the A reference frame? and the change in kinetic energy of a single object now. Single object. Uh, do you notice I'm writing single? A single object that, that collides and begins to move maybe in a different direction, different velocity. Well, unfortunately it doesn't work the same as for delta V and delta P for uh, both single objects and systems. For a single object, the change in kinetic energy of an object is not the same in two different reference frames. And why do we say this? Well, I'm not going to do the, the calculation for you, but say now in the A reference frame, the velocity of a single object moved, say, from that was going at 5 meters per second positive to, say, minus 1. 
And then in the new reference frame, remember the delta V in a new reference, inertial reference frame has to be the same. The delta V, the delta V, right? So say now in, the, in another reference frame, this, this gets shifted up and it starts at 10 meters per second. And because this delta V is, is actually, it's minus 6, so it's minus 1, minus 5. It's minus 6 meters per second. So this goes from 10 to 4, right? So, it goes, so that's still um, minus 6, the delta, the delta V. So if you measure the change in kinetic energy here, and you measure the change, you go half mv final squared minus half mv initial squared. That's the final velocity. That's the initial velocity. You're going to get some kind of kinetic energy. If you do the exact same calculation here, again, half mv final minus half mv initial, even though the delta v is the same, the kinetic energy is not the change, the change in K, the change in K is not the same. It is different. And, and the one simple way of, of realizing why it's different is because of the squareds. Uh, so there has to be a V there. There's the squared value um, doesn't allow for there to be this kind of similarity. Okay? With delta, delta V and delta P, the the delta v was a, it was a linear relationship the p p is m v so if if v changes delta v then p changes delta p by the same amount however if you've got a squared over there like here then the deltas are not going to be the same okay so just go and do some of those calculations and see what i'm talking about okay and now what about the what about now the difference in kinetic energy for the system? Well, again, this is exactly the same as before. The kinetic energy for a system is going to be different because your velocities are different. Now, this is, this is an important thing. What about your delta K for the system? Okay, you just, so this will also be different. And then your delta K for the system, you just need to go do the calculations. This is the same. So we've got we've got this being the same. So it means that the change in momentum is the same in different inertial reference frames and the change in kinetic energy is the same in different reference frames. Okay? So I hope this is helping a little bit. Then finally so that's what we just said. The delta K in the B reference frame is the same as the delta K. The system's kinetic energy must also, the system's kinetic energy must also be the same. Uh, sorry, the change, the change. That's important. Not, not the kinetic energy, the change in kinetic energy of the system must be the same in any two uh, inertial reference frames. However, the change in kinetic energy of a single object depends on the reference frame in which it is measured. Okay? And then finally, in terms of energy, the, ch the delta E, remember this is, remember E is equal to kinetic energy plus E internal. So delta E is delta K plus delta E internal. And the energy, the total energy in, in system A is equal to the total energy. Changes in the energy of a system, the change in energy of a system are the same in any two reference frames moving at a constant velocity relative to each other. Okay, guys, it's very helpful to understand this and work through it and uh, work through it in first from first principles. Okay, see you then.